Right, so today we want to talk about another product from a little while ago that we all got very, very excited about. I want to talk about the UC3200. The name has changed, but the product's the same and even better. We're going to go through a number of the key features about this active, active server that gives you another layer of efficiency and protection for your business. The specs and information should be on the screen right now, but what we're going to do is go through the user interface and we're going to do a live demonstration of this device showing you what happens in the event of controller failure. We've got everything from IOPS to virtual machines running at once to show you what this device can do. Right, so here's the desktop interface thanks to DSM installed on the UC3200. We're looking at the high availability manager here. And this is just showing us a lot of the layout of the two controllers inside this device. Now, the original recordings during this were done during Synology's own event in Taipei. And I'm just overviewing this right now. So I apologize for the Blair Witch style shaky cam, but it's probably for the best this way. But that little blob on the bottom right of the screen is me talking to a couple of the people along with the product manager there. Now, the device when looking at the high availability manager will show both sides of those controller boards. Uh, inside the UC3200 and as you can see the CPU utilization for both is around the 20% mark. Now while this has been running the storage manager also has two separate volumes living on each controller. If you look a little carefully there on screen you can see storage pool 1 on controller A and storage pool 2 on controller B. What that means is two separate volumes on individual controllers which only goes further to highlight the fact that this great device can be used um, with both CPUs doing different things. So even though it has that dual controller architecture for protection, as you can see, there is different storage areas and volumes spread across those different controllers. So it isn't just a mirroring option. We've got LUN targets and more, and as you can see, both of them are on separate controllers, with LUN 1 on controller A and LUN 2 on controller B. Again, until the expo, I didn't realise this device could be used with those controllers doing different things. And I thought this was more like traditional Synology high availability, with both NASes running the same thing identically. So it's great to see that level of separa separation available to you. Now... During this, it was also worth highlighting that the device has got a uh, 10 GBE port there on the rear, along with traditional 1 GBE as well, and PCIe upgrade slots. So there is the option for installing those cards and upgrading further, but the true extent to which you could take advantage of those slots in an independent fashion, as opposed to mirroring, remains to be seen. But right now, we're, we're gearing up to do this test whereby the separate actions are taking place on different controllers inside this device and we're still going to pull one of the controllers on the rear of this device. Now while I was filming this and talking to the product manager he also showed me as you can see on screen that not only have we got IO meter at the top left showing activity on both controllers so that's the top two bars and the bottom two bars representing different controllers. But on top of that, we've got loads of IOP operations on the right working on different controllers and a virtual machine on the bottom left there playing media on controller A inside this device. Now the whole thing we're looking at right now is a virtual machine that we're running. So the bottom left is running media within that virtual machine and this whole thing is a virtual machine that we're accessing through. So this was kind of the environment we were playing with here, with both controllers not, you know, working together but still running separate activities, with the hope that once one controller board was removed to simulate the effect of a critical hardware failure, that the second controller would take over. Now, right now, things are running perfectly well. Both of those controllers are doing what they do, and with the virtual machine and all those different IO meter um, measurements going on, and again with those separate controllers uh, controlling volumes and LUNs and more, we decided now is the time to remove one of the controller boards. So we're not just you know removing a power supply, we are ripping one whole controller board, CPU, memory ports and all from this device, and immediately look at IO meter via the virtual machine at the top left. Those bars have disappeared. We've removed that 
and the device itself is still continuing. And now IIMeter resumed because all of the LUNs, the targets, everything that it was accessing on a controller A has now been passed over to controller B or controller 2. The reason being that due to the architecture of the 3200, it is accessing the same storage drives at once. So although the controllers are separate, all of the media, all of the files, all of the key components of your storage never changes. It's the pathway to them. So there was a brief dip there in literal seconds that showed that transition. And now once we go back to the high availability manager, we can see that controller A is greyed out. Controller B is fine and the CPU utilization and memory utilization has gone up. So now into the 40s and 50% because it's taking the load that existed on controller A. Now remember, this is being recorded in real time. I haven't cut this video. It is the whole thing happening at that time. So this gives you a real indicator of just how healthy Synology's high availability manager on the UC3200 works so beautifully well. Indeed, now we're reinstalling that controller to show you what happens during the recovery. Because once you install a new controller, as you can see we're doing here on screen, obviously the effects won't be instant. But to be frank, I was really, really impressed with just how quick it was. Because we installed this new controller, there was a beep, as you would expect from any Synology device, let alone desktop or rack mount related, and then we would start to see that this recovery, so, you know, in a realistic scenario, perhaps you would have your broken controller, you'd send it off and get a same day or next day replacement based on wherever you are in the world, and there you can see controller A has now been initialized. Now, you can see from the bottom of the clock there, on the virtual machine there, that it showed 11.41 on that date of recording, I believe the 29th of May. If you rewind back, you'll get a real-time update of just how quick that was, in case you're wondering about whether I've edited this video too much. But, as I can say, I believe I skipped forward a matter of seconds because of the depth that um, someone jogging past me there at the event. It was rather busy, as you can see from the reflection. But right now, it's checking the authenticity of that controller. It's running background checks before it would simply hand over to that controller board, as you would expect. Now, the controller B is still supporting everything. So if you've got multiple users for business or home, you know, which would be madness for this, mind you, if you're file hosting, as you can see, I've skipped forward. The clock is now 11.52, so it was less than a minute, and controller A took the load back. So 28% now being done by controller A and 23% of controller B, pretty much where we were to start with. And as you can see, that is how straightforward this is. And that is just how important the storage manager is in the grand scheme of things to users and the redundant, you know, the fantastic redundancy of this dual controller environment to a single pool of storage. Now, if you compare that against traditional units right now that show um, high availability with two separate NASs that are synced together with a network heartbeat, you'll know just like my test that I did la um, late last year, that the transition time is nowhere near as quick as this. It's still quick, but thanks to this high availability manager and overview, you can get more information that the whole device is up and running and our storage is still accessible, those VMs are still running, and this has been the full test of what I think could be one of the most hardware innovative things that Synology have put out there. Don't get me wrong, I'm still hugely impressed with that 10 GBE and NVMe SSD combo card that they finally unveiled, but this took a very close second for me. And with more information available in this where they've synced a lot of the features and functionality available in their own task manager into this single interface, standard technology, I'm really looking forward to doing my own live tests with a UC3200 later this year when it's finally released. Thank you so much for watching. I've got a few more software overviews to do and I'm hoping to have those out in the next day or so. But otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.